Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only Trent set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called, what's up, Brie? What's up, Key? The ingredients call for one cup of frozen mango chunks, one and a half ounces of Malibu rum or flavored vodka, and one and a half ounces of peach schnapps, one tablespoon of grenadine to taste, some maraschino cherries, and pineapples. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to, in a blender, add the mango, the rum, peach schnapps, and blend on high speed. Pour into a glass, drizzle the grenadine, stir in the garnish, and enjoy. Serve immediately. That's a what's up, Brie? <laughs> what's up, Key? Hey! <laughs> Welcome back to Cocktail Trade Discussions, you guys. As you see, we have the lovely Brie Renee here with us. This is our first guest since we've been back in the studio. First so welcome. Hey. I love you. When I tell y'all be stalking you on Instagram. I love you guys. <laughs> the glow up is just so real, bro. We leveling up every year. It's gonna get better. I'm like, mine. You get better every time. time. Let me tell y'all, Brie came on the show before before we were even doing Ages video ago. every episode but she came on she brought some girlfriends with her we had an excellent episode that was like in the 100s or maybe even before episode 100 but it was called pretty girls go crazy for the d so if you mm-hmm. haven't listened to that one go back and listen to it but we're excited to have her she's a radio personality an actress entrepreneur always hustling this is big money Bree. okay oh, big, oh, money. big money Bree. Bree. i like that one. we're gonna take that one rolling with yes. it Bree, hey ladies you thank you so much for having me back i'm really excited to be here you know i love i'm a fan of cocktails i'm a fan of these ladies both individually and as a group it's a duo thank it's like you. the whole thank thing you. i love both you guys i'm following everything and i'm excited to be here I'm like, oh my God, I get to go on cocktails and be nasty <laughs> with my girls. So yes, I'm excited. I've been working, doing good, mm-hmm. just elevating. Like you said, just continue trying to level up. I saw you just got a booking too. Congratulations. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I'm going to be on Tales. Okay. Oh, wow. Tales, a, a new season is coming out. We're filming next week, but it'll probably air sometime in the fall. Congratulations. That is so exciting. Mm-hmm. That is exciting. When mm-hmm. you be submitting your auditions, do you audition from home? Yes. Okay. Self tape. Oh. Self tape oh, and uh, voiceover. I be in the closet. <laughs> Girl, I'm just in my closet feeling like Nas. All I need is one mic. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in there like a, a mixtape rapper. Right. Grinding Grinding it make out. sure that sound is crispy. Y'all, before we play the game, I just wanted to say we were talking about how mamas be blowing us up. So my mama do. calls me super early this morning. Y'all, let me tell you what my mama told me. She thought she could play a joke. She has to have surgery. She calls me and says, I'm not going to be able to do it. I said, why not? What's wrong? Is something wrong? Like, I'm concerned. Well, you know, they have to do some blood work and I'm pregnant. Not That's your mama not funny. <laughs> so I just said, all right, girl. I know you've been through menopause. She like, hasn't. Oh. But yeah. But she still, hasn't. It's like, nah, don't play them games. Yeah. So she was like, yeah, I don't I don't know how this happened. I said, girl, I'm not about to play with you. You've been on TikTok. You're trying to do a prank with me right now. It's not happening. She was like, yeah, I was just joking. I just knew you were going to be upset. You took that well. I said, girl, you are over 50 years old. That would be so Now mama trying to get her content up. <laughs> right. Mama's- like, what's going on? She sends me TikToks all day. I'm like, stop playing on the phone this is for the kids right <laughs> you need a new hobby anyway um brie we are going to play a game with you okay. it's called i'm curious to know so we're just going to ask you a couple questions and then you answer them truthfully mm. Mm. there's no out of this okay there's brie no Renee, out. straight from the a <laughs> your favorite radio babe. <laughs> i'm curious to know when is the last time you had bad sex Ooh. Mm. bad it's been a couple years. Oh, what a blessing. What yeah. A blessing yeah. Because be Cause I went, I've been in a relationship now for a year. Uh-huh. And then before this relationship, I was just done with niggas for like eight months. Uh huh. So it's been at least two years. Okay. Oh, that is a long time. That's, a, that's healthy, right? That's yeah. healthy. Yeah. That's healthy. Right. You got to take a break. Right. Yeah. I'm all for taking a break. I, I had to take a real, I had to hard stop. You know what I'm saying? Was it hard to do that? It was for me. I, it was. <laughs> It was. I get it. It was. I like sex. I Me love too. sex. Me it's three. Like, yes. 
<laughs> so, so when you take a break, ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. But I was like just done with the pickings at the time. You know, mm-hmm. you just be so disgusted. You turned and then off. don't you hate when you do fuck somebody and you're like, you didn't even deserve this. Yeah, and he yeah. gets to put you under his body belt. Yeah, like I don't know you. Delete. Control. Uh-huh. I'm like trying to men and black him before okay. they leave the house. And he, you <laughs> know, like, he bragging it? like, yeah, you know. I, I, yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, shut the I'm fuck so up. Yeah. Shut it up. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Speaking of being in a relationship now, does your boyfriend ever get mad at anything in your comment section on Instagram? Comments? No. He never cares. He doesn't even. I don't think he even reads my comments. <laughs> he don't even follow me. Yeah, you know, he 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 comments and he'll, but he doesn't care about comments. He mm-hmm. might get mad at something I wear. Like, mm. where you going we with that ass? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. We saw our list. Yes, okay. 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 About, I can't wait to talk about that. Um, okay, next one. What is one of the worst dates you've been on in life? I'm talking about you were like, I want to go home. Okay. This is kind of weird. But it wasn't a bad date per se. But the energy, the vibe was off. And I think I really offended the guy because um, it was kind of like a fan guy mm. and he had been sending me gifts to the station he had is been that who was sending you flowers and stuff all the flowers. time flowers you, you, you guys she used to send get these giant bouquets of roses i thought she was in love i did no, i didn't know him i didn't know right. him but was he was like, so persistent man. he bought he bought me like lubins for christmas that came up what? And that is scary. never that met is scary. It, okay it kind of was but i'm adventurous <laughs> but she was, I'm so, so i was like let's go on a date you know so okay so we went on a date to I think it was like the Javante Davis fight or something here okay. in Atlanta um and it's cool I didn't meet him at my house or whatever I played it safe like let's mm-hmm. meet somewhere and then we go um but when we were on the way he you know I smoke weed so he had some weed he was rolled up and I was like I'm I'm straight I don't want to smoke your <laughs> weed like it's making my head hurt mm-hmm. and he was like my weed making your head hurt this that this that loud and I'm like nah bro you know I'm from Atlanta so I'm like nah I mean I'm not offending you like it's straight but it's making my head hurt we still gotta go mm-hmm. in the fight so he had an attitude cause I didn't want to smoke his bad <laughs> weed and it was just yeah, y'all in the car arguing about the string of weed. Really? <laughs> My head hurt. He's like, nah, bro. I'm like, wait. I'm like, you want to get some loud? I know we could get some, but this ain't me. No. <laughs> So did y'all stay on the date? Like we went to the to the fight, but uh-huh. after that, I was like, you was just shot me off. No, he looked like a thumb. <laughs> People are like. <laughs> Oh my, my gosh! You called somebody a hamburger on the last episode, no, and she's like, talking about a hamburger. Uh uh-uh, uh. Okay. Um. Yeah, that was crazy. You were getting a lot of gifts. Yeah. And you didn't even know him. Yeah. No. What a blessing. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> How many gifts. times a day do you get hollered at? Would you say uh, on average? Girl, I'm just so exhausted from I bet. that. <laughs> I think that's all to answer that question. Right. Honestly, Go I don't. First. I don't. Honestly, as a woman, I feel like. You can't go nowhere without a man trying to holler at you. Not the gas station, the mm-hmm. grocery store. The gas store. station is a war zone. For it me. is. Like, it really it's is traumatic. It's, it's traumatic. Be, Sometimes yeah. I just sit in the car and I'm like, okay, well, on the count of three. Yeah. And then don't if be too many people. I'm not going to that gas station. And if, yeah, you're, no. if you just have to stop and get gas and you're already dressed for wherever you're going, you're like, fuck, I'm yeah. not gonna mm-hmm. make it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell I'm my not. mama I love her. And I have my mask on and they be like, damn. And I'm like, you don't even know what fifty percent of my face looks like. And you can be fooled because Brie, I went on a date with a man. And he had the mask on. I met him in the grocery store. Mm. He had a mask on. I met him for drinks. He took the mask off. He was waiting a long time to take his mask. Like he <laughs> waited right until they brought the stuff. And I was like, why? Because the grill is fucked up. His tooth was a triangle. Oh, I no. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I, That's why you left it on. Mm-hmm. You got to pull it down. You got to give somebody a warning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Send me a pic first. Smiling, mm-hmm. please. So you would say on average, what, like 10 times a day? Yeah, probably. Oh. What about you? That's a lot. Not that many. I don't leave the house that damn much. (laughs) But I would say every time I leave the house, if I leave the house three times, I'm getting hollered at three times. Yes. I I don't even count Instagram. No, no, Instagram doesn't count. I look, I'm with you, ladies. And then if I don't leave the house and I'm just in my building going to walk my dog and I gotta walk my dog four times a day, it's like Yeah, because you live in a building. Access. Yeah. Access. A building full of scammers and niggas. It's it's always people over there. I can't always. And it's it's to the point where it's like I just start looking busted. To just go out and I still get my hair. on purpose. And they're no. like, and you look good without makeup. Hey, yeah. I didn't thought this was supposed to repel it. I like them dirty gray sweats you got on. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's the eyes. It's I the haven't eyes. bathed today, the... sir. Why right. are you in my... I got so many cute fashion over three piece sets, little fuzzy ones. And I'm like, I can't even go out in these because this is like a, this yeah, is a, a magnet. Yeah. Bro. Okay, next one. Um, okay. Brie, what is the most important 
thing to you in a relationship and be honest. I always like women to be honest. If you're like, that nigga got to make money and that's the most important thing to you or if it's love or if it's... It's sex. For <laughs> me. Like, I, it's, say less. Yeah, it's sex for me. Wow. I honestly feel like we can work on a lot of things, but if we don't have like that intimacy because... Honestly, good dick calms me down. Like, I need you to be able to shut me the fuck up. That's the only way. It's, you know what I'm saying? I, I need that. Because I'm such a dominant woman, and I'm so on and, like, strong in the real world or whatever. You know how we are. It's like when we have to just put this on all the time. So it's like when I come home, I want to feel submissive. But I really feel like it doesn't matter how much money you make because I'm going to be a millionaire as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how smart you are. I'm intelligent. But one thing you can have that I don't got is that dick. (laughs) Good old baby (laughs) leg. You know, I always say good dick. Sex in general, it clears my face up. As you can see, I have a pimple on the corner of my forehead. And you haven't been having that. I haven't had any sex. Uh, But Monday, come Monday, I'm about to get that back blown out. I hope you you don't get stuck. Call me little Clarisel. (laughs) Oh, what it do? Okay. <laughs> well, this is my last question. I know that you skipped it, but I, I always wanted it. to. I know had a this. different question. Oh, okay. do you have it? No, go ahead. You ask her. Bree, I know like your family has connections or owns like Blue Flame, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever considered being a stripper? Hell yeah. Okay. Okay, first of all, my family owns the flame, right? My grandfather started it, but I always wanted to be a dancer. I used to like <laughs> play like, okay, I'm gonna go out of town. Like I used to plan, like if maybe if I go to Houston, That's won't hard. nobody know me. Like I re- I have always thought about it. I love I think that it's such an empowering career. I think that if you can own it and like really be about it, it's like a different level of like bossiness. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some of the greatest people that women that I've met in Atlanta have been strippers and they can have great conversations. They know everybody from the mayors to the scammers. Mm -hmm. Like, and they just are well rounded people. Because it it makes you that. The environment shapes you like that. I wanted to ask you a different question about the strip club. Do you ever dismiss working there? Hell yeah. Yes. Again, every time I'm in there, like I go often and um, when I'm there, sometimes it's hard because like, you know, people still. Mm -hmm. Uh So my brain starts calculating how much money I would make if I was working. So for a minute when I did leave, I had to like go cold turkey and go. I did a fast of like 45 (laughs) days and I YouTubed it. 45 days where I was not going in my strip club or any strip club in the city of Atlanta because it was hard. It's like something, it's a part of who I am. It's, I've been in that money. environment since mm-hmm. I was 15. I've been making money wow. in that environment since I was 15. That's a From waitressing to everything in there. So to not make that fast money no more, it's like, I always tell people, it's like I'm a drug dealer that is trying to be a rapper. Like eventually, <laughs> like you want to leave that, but you're like, damn, that money's so good. Like, should I? Yeah. It's like, I can also be great at this. this. Um, is your granddaddy single? But he did. Oh, but okay. he no, he died married. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be in the family. Right. Oh, I cannot. But speaking of being in the family, we're gonna move on to weird sex, and I have a story about somebody who was trying to be in a family. Okay. Jesus. Mm. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, um, I want to tell a story. And these people are in a different country. Their culture is a little bit different. But I want to know how y'all feel about it. There was a wedding planned in, um, what's the city called? Uttar Pradesh. Pra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh. I had to write it That's out. How fancy? Okay. How it's yeah. pronounced? <laughs> it's in India. So there was um, a wedding going on, y'all. The bride died Mm-mm. at the wedding. But, yeah, but the wedding still went on. That's okay, <laughs> so listen, but you know, this is an arranged marriage. So it was so like, who? we done paid the dowry. Like- Somebody's getting married today. So the groom is there. Something happens with the bride. She has like a heart attack or something and collapses. She dies during this long wedding ceremony. Cause you know, theirs isn't like just walk down the aisle. It's like events. So they call a doctor. They have her in another room. The doctor says she's dead. They just keep the body in the other room and was like, little sis, you up next. So you're about to get married. So the 
the groom married her sister. That is you so learned. Mm-hmm. And so the rest of the family was just like, you know, there were so many mixed emotions because, you know, one of my sisters is dead. This is a brother. One of my sisters is dead in the other room and the other one just got married. So we're sad and we're happy. I wonder if they took her wedding dress off and put it on the little sister. Well, you know, they're not wearing like the white wedding dresses. So everybody is dressed up. So probably not. They probably kept her clothes, but it didn't say. They probably but had to take the ring. First yeah, of Nisha, all. Nisha, um, Nisha still got married. Nisha's a I'm uh, next. Yeah. So they still got married Rude. and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm haunting everyone for the I rest of the day. I was about to say, God nobody's going to get a good you know, night's sleep ever again. Ever. But you know what? She didn't know him. This is an arranged marriage. So they weren't in love. You're right. So the family set this up so it's not like she had that connection. Could you imagine you think that your sister is getting married off and you're planning in your head to run away because you don't want to arrange marriage and then your sister just drops dead and and now you got to get married like, damn, I ain't got time. What if she really just poisoned herself? She's like, I don't want to marry him. She could have. I don't want to marry him. Or what if the little sister did it because she wanted to marry him. He got that guac. Ooh. This could be a lifetime. Y'all don't even be smelling curry randomly throughout the day so be like, Natasha's here. (laughs) Yeah, she's pissed. <laughs> anyway, that was the crazy weird sex story for this week. If y'all see any more, everybody was sending that to me. Thank you. Send it to me at info at kikisetso.com or DM it to me on Instagram. Mm. And today, for our topics of discussion, we are talking about, I really wanted to talk about this, Brie, because like sometimes I feel like women are just really getting real entitled with some things, mm-hmm. with certain things. It's like a lot. And I'll be like, bro, can y'all be nice just a little bit? A little bit. So I wanted to read a text message thread, and then we're kind of all going to give our opinions on what we think. <clears throat> so this is the first page. This is the guy. Hey, uh, you're checked into the hotel, right? Let me know what's going on. I called you three times. What the fuck? Yeah, she said, fun? I'm so sorry. I just checked in 30 minutes ago. My phone was charging because it died. I'm getting mm. out of the shower now. He said, bet, I'm on my way to see you. She said, huh? Question mark. <laughs> he said, uh, what you mean, huh? <laughs> I'm on my way to hang out with you. Is that an issue? She said, hang out in what way? He said, Tessa, <laughs> we've been talking five and a half months. I flew you out here and got you a hotel. I want to see you, babe. Why are you acting brand new? She said, it's late. I don't want company tonight. I'm tired. It's literally after midnight. He said, oh, okay, I'll be over in the morning then. I'll let you sleep. She said, over in the morning just to hang out as friends, right? He said, can we FaceTime at least? She said, my phone is still charging. He said, (laughs) but we're texting. Right. (laughs) He said, why are you acting different? Do you not want to hang out? I didn't know it was just friends. I would not have flown you out. I don't fuck with my friends. We've been sending nudes and sexting on FaceTime. What am I missing here? Question mark. That was the part for me. And I think he's being real respectful Respectful. still. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's what's happening here? Because I booked this room. I know where you at. I'm right. moving up. She but. said, I feel like we're rushing things. I don't want to have sex or anything. <laughs> Just hang out as friends if that's okay. You're amazing and, go- and a good friend. I don't want to upset you. He said, upset me, question mark. I'm livid. I paid over a thousand dollars for you to come over here. I don't do that for friends. You know what? No worries. Since we're back, since we're friends, I need my money back. Hmm. 977.56. <laughs> She said, I don't have that. Why are you acting this way? I just want to take things slow. Please don't be mean. Taking it slow would mean me not flying you out here. You played me. So check this. So check it. So check out is at 12 p.m. tomorrow. I'm canceling the other two days. Also, I'm canceling the flight back. You can figure it out on your own. Mm. She said, wow, this is how you be doing, people? <clears throat> yes. I don't have money to get home. At least allow me to fly back. I'll check out tomorrow. He said, no, I'll lose my number and have a nice life. And then she sent a whole bunch of other text messages. Like, and I'm he sorry, blocked I'm her. Sorry. They weren't going through. I want to dive into this. So what do you think, Brie? Okay, first of all, I do uh, believe that you can be flown out and not have sex. Agreed. I think that is fundamental happens, right? True. But... I do feel like as a woman, she was very entitled. Like, he flew you out regardless of the time you got in. Still, And and I appreciate how he was still open to meeting her in the morning. And then Mm -hmm. she was still like, no. So, it was like, you really don't want to hang out with me. So, why are you here? Why would you waste the nigga that was down here? Or you you were just trying to hang hang, out mm -hmm. and meet some new niggas? Or like, what? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's not cool. I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I'm not a woman who, like, hates men. I'm like, let's do them all dirty. Even though they be doing those dirty. I don't feel that way. I feel like if someone, no matter how much money you have, and no, I don't owe you pussy if you fly me out. I don't feel that way. You don't have to fuck. That's weird. Right, right. But no matter how much money you have or don't have, you worked hard for that. 
Facts. So, and I appreciate the fact that you even got me my own room because a lot of niggas would be like, "You gonna stay at my with, house? Yeah, right? or wherever. Yeah. Or, and if or I'm coming over there, yeah. we're going somewhere together. He's, yeah. he's already at the room. It's not yeah. gonna be no real privacy. It, he paid his hard earned money for you to have your own room, flew you out, and he obviously planned a weekend of events because he wanted you there for three days, and he had things he wanted to do. And yeah. you're not used to this because you just said I don't even have the money to to fly myself back. So stop acting like this. What yeah. Are you doing? Yeah. 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 Let's back up. You, the girl is telling the guy that she wants to hang out just as friends. Why are you sending him news? Why? Because sometimes sexting, yeah. you're sexting with him because sometimes I do think that you can give a man total friend vibes and he misreads that. Mm-hmm. But there's no misreading that. You used him mm-hmm. and that's not okay. Like you're playing with this man's emotions and now you're fucking it up for the rest of us because Fact. now he gonna be scorned and be like, this is how the girls do. I'm not doing this shit again. Now he gonna be upset like somebody broke his heart you played him and you were wrong for that and everybody needs to stop going places with no money oh. i get it <laughs> we gotta stop doing that i'll be honest i did it before when i was in my early 20s that was I'll a horrible idea horrible it's- idea but <clears throat> you know as you get older you learn you become wiser i would never do that shit again if i can't pay my own way i'm not going because yeah. what if you do just not like him or what if he flips the script on you you're gonna get stuck so as fun as it sounds to get fun- flown out by somebody y'all gotta stop doing that shit if you can't get home facts i've been flown out several times and mm-hmm. And a lot of them were like kind of like first hangouts. Yeah. And so I made it clear. I feel like set those boundaries up front, like before, like, hey, you know, when we come, I'll stay with you. We can, you don't even got to get a separate room, but we not, you know, be respectful, mm-hmm. so be mindful. I like the yeah. details. Yeah. When you, because a lot of our listeners do too. When, let's say you are getting flown out for, mm-hmm. flewed out for a first time <laughs> hangout. Yeah. How do you get that message across? Do you text it? Do you call him so that it's very clear? Like, hey, listen, mm-hmm. I believe is- in um, vocal communication mm-hmm. so I will if we're on if we FaceTime we call whatever I'm letting you know like hey okay you book while we while we're talking about booking everything mm-hmm. before you go through with I'm letting you know before you spend this money okay yeah you know this is our first time so don't be and I might even put it in a joking way mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be rude about it like right. I know t- you know yeah. again have some sympathy because guys don't usually do this. Not every guy spends money on girls, you know. Mm-hmm. And we try, to, we try to warm them up to doing it. So okay. do we it the right help way, y'all too. Yeah. So let them know, like, hey, you know, as he's booking things that y'all are arranging, like, you know, this is our first time. I'm not that kind of girl, you know. You gonna have to warm me up or earn that. We gotta build a little bit more before we get to the sexual part. And most dudes gonna be like, yeah, okay. Now you might have some that might still try you when you're there, mm-hmm. but then you reiterate that I said that before I, I got here. I, said. Yeah. I, I wasn't just playing. <laughs> but, and that's an important thing. Like, you gotta talk to these people. Sometimes there's no conversation. Like, I was complaining about a guy where I felt like I was really trying to get to know him, and all he wanted to do was spend money and talk about money all day, and it's like, I'm trying to get to know you. We're never going to progress to where I feel comfortable doing anything else with you, but letting pockets. you buy gifts. You know, we'll never pass that, because I don't know you still. And another thing, ladies, don't let the men fool you. Sometimes I do this reverse psychology thing. I had a man who was flying me out mm-hmm. and I let him know. I don't even think it was a fly out situation. I think I was just going to his house, actually, in Atlanta. <laughs> and I just it let was him, a drive out. It was, it was a drive out and it was late though. And I, wa- <laughs> I wanted to hang out with him. And yeah. I also wanted him to know though, like I realize it's late and you probably think you're going to have sex. I'm literally coming to Netflix and the real chill. chill. Not, yeah. I'm not, I don't plan on busting not, it wide open. Yeah. And, and I was very serious about that. And then he hit me with the, why would you think I would even expect that? Nigga, why? Because it's after 12. Why would you not want it? Because if I was all at you, you're going to catch it. And you were going to try. Like, let's be honest. We're grown. You have a penis. I have a wet ass pussy. Yeah. (laughs) You were going to try to slide up in here. And I just want you to know, please don't do it because then I'm going to feel some type of way because I told you no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't let them use the reverse psychology and then make you feel bad. And then you give them feel bad pussy. And then you're like, oh, he really didn't try. Yeah, no. Don't do that. Stick to it. Are you still watching? Mm-hmm. No, we're not watching. We're and I feel like guys respect you more when they if they fly you out and you say you don't want to have sex and then you stick to it. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I did that like in my relationship. Now our first, we went on one date in Atlanta because we both live here. But then he was in Miami for a month and he was like, "Well, I want you to come down here." And I'm like, "Okay, we only went on one date, so don't <laughs> think it's gonna go too fast, too mm-hmm. furious." You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. But we went out and we stayed in the same bed, same room the whole time. He never tried anything. And afterwards, he was like, "You know, I kind of thought." 
thought you was going to throw Blast me some beer, <laughs> but you did. So I liked that. Like, and uh-huh. flew me out again. When like, you were laying in the bed and y'all really weren't doing grown folks things, what were the thoughts going through your mind? Because sometimes when I did that, sometimes my thoughts be like, I I really do want to go. Sometimes I do too. I'll be like, mm, I changed my mind. Right. He had a great I'll be like, mm, I really feel like him. So I really want to bitch. know if his dick big so yeah. I can get this over with or not. Yeah. Like, like, you really got to tell yourself, okay, stop, 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 stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to cross my legs real tight. <laughs> I got to sleep with a hoodie on. Like, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm wiping all the makeup off. Yeah. Like, you know what I do, so I, I wear... If I feel like I might be tempted, this is so yeah. No, I wear like something hard to get off. Like that's cute. I tried cute. that. <laughs> it wasn't cute though, girl. I had on a waist trainer and like a waist cincher on top of that, and I still ma- me and him managed to get that shit off. Look. I changed my mind. <laughs> He told me don't wear that bulletproof vest no more. You in there smelling like a little tire. <laughs> and it didn't but, even matter. He still gobbled it up. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes it happens. But you wear something that's that hard to that's get off. That's hard to get off. So it's like, okay, I'm not, I don't feel like doing all this. Or uh-huh. he doesn't feel like doing all this. Even though I kind of want to go further than this. Not that's a good happen. idea. That's what I do. Great mental strength <laughs> yeah. that, that you practiced there. I need to, yeah. I need to work on it. I don't know if I will work on it, but it sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good. I'm past that point in my life. Okay, so <laughs> now to your relationship. How did you guys meet? We met through a mutual friend. So my best friend, my female best friend, is actually his female best friend. They grew up together. Oh, so okay. he lived here for 10 years, but we kind of didn't know each other. And I did used to see him like all the time in passing with her. Like she they would hang out mm-hmm. and or he might come over to my house and I'd be like, oh hey, bye. Like I'm running off to do something, go to work. And so I remember um he took some girl that I knew on a date and we were like come over here let's have like a little smoke session or whatever mm-hmm. and then he was taking her on his fancy ass date and I was like well if this nigga this good why ain't nobody intro- like right. why you ain't trying to set this up and then my birthday my last birthday had passed and he came to my birthday party as just a friend again mm-hmm. and he bought my birthday cake bought like he help like make it cool in mm-hmm. corona mm-hmm. and then in covid That's sweet. yeah That's in the middle of covid sweet. yeah it was and then he then he told my best friend like she ain't talking to no dudes ain't nobody buy her a car it's like buy her a car man, what? He need to be my boyfriend if he think a lot. He's talking about he want to buy car, right? Did he buy you that car? He did. Wow. About six months into the relationship, but hey, man. it was. But he said, and look at how she's smiling. And look at how she's glowing. Skin you want your girl that's on top tree? You right? Buy her a car six months in, yeah, and you gonna be smiling too. We all want to smile. We all want to smile. Don't hey, you want to smile? Look. <laughs> No, but yeah, and he had told my best friend prior to, he was like, yeah, if I get Brie, I would give up all the hoes for her. Like, I'll give up. I ain't even no doubt. Like, he saw my worth mm-hmm. before we even were in a relationship. So, when uh-huh. he came, he came all the way correct, full throttle. So, it was like, he eliminated everybody. Everybody. Mm-hmm. When somebody steps correct, you do be like, mm-hmm. fuck yeah, these other niggas. Why, why are we even see you? Right. Yeah, you start why looking at what Where have you been? Why didn't you get here sooner? Exactly. <laughs> That's you what I'm ready. Yeah. Because we neither, fucked it neither one of us were ready. I would have mm-hmm. squandered it. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. That happens. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I wanna know mm-hmm. was he your type? No. What is your type? I don't have a physical type. Uh-huh. I, I kind of like a little ugly. Mm-hmm. Me too. I like yeah. a little blown ugly. I like a little ugly. <laughs> and I have a type. So <clears throat> excuse me, the only type I have. The only thing that every guy I ever dated has in common is that they are extraordinary at whatever it is they do. Mm-hmm. So it, you don't have to look like a certain thing. You just got to be good as fuck at something. What yeah, mm-hmm. what you do. That turns me on. But um, no, and I remember like when we first started dating, like after our first date, I'm like, damn, he's so cool. Mm-hmm. And I fuck with him as a person. And I respect his friendship that I don't even want to date him. Because mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. even... You're scared if you I, fucked I, it up. I literally said in my brain, I want you to be in my life forever. So mm-hmm. I don't even want to date you. Because I felt like... It could go wrong. It could... Yeah. He gonna fuck it up or I'm gonna fuck it up. And, and then you won't even be cool no more. Yeah, we won't even be cool no more. So... But it was after him just being consistent and showing up and patient with me mm-hmm. that I, like, let all my guards down. And it's like, oh, like, what girl? I remember being in the shower one time, like, you are so fucking dumb. What girl would not want a nigga that's doing all this? <laughs> like, like, why? You need to stop dealing with these zeros. Like, you know what I'm saying? Give it a hero. Like, I was literally talking. Give <laughs> it a hero. Yeah, talking myself out of my own toxicity. What? Yeah. What are your toxic traits? Like, when you say, like, I'm going to fuck it up. How, do, how does Brie fuck it up? Um, 
Brie will fuck it up because Brie has a short attention span sometimes. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure I'm an Aries. Okay. So Aries women are very dominant and we kind of think and act like guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I feel like I'm sh- I'm really strong in this relationship. I've been doing good. But sometimes <laughs> good as Aries, yeah, I'm doing good. I think this is the one. That's why I think it's the one. Yes. Yeah. So, but normally like I would have still like I, because I feel like all niggas ain't shit, I feel like I got to get me a plan B or a, a like side a nigga. No, 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 no. Like a, a, pl- a backup plan, dude. Oh, okay. I was like, we, we, just we keep plan B, B too. <laughs> but no, but a backup plan for a dude or a side nigga just mm-hmm. because I automatically feel like you ain't, you ain't going to be shit. So yeah. let me be not be shit first. Mm-hmm. That's toxic. Oh, that's yeah. toxic. That's You're toxic. You're like planning for the fuck up. Yeah, but it didn't even it happen. Happened. It's like, you're making the scenario up in your mind. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of women do that. Yeah, I know so that it's sometimes like, I'm like, before he breaks my heart, I'm going to do some shit. To yeah. I don't even be thinking about that. Well, I'm not going to cut off all these rich niggas that I know. Because because just, just in case. Yeah, just and then lose, a, no, lose a good dude over, you know. Because I don't just, know which one is might be all right. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. then yeah. like, the universe, it. I feel like when you do live your life, it's like, I'm going to keep these niggas just in case. And the universe like, okay, well, just in case it's going to happen. Then. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't until I really had to walk I really realized, like, damn, I had toxic ways in this relationship because mm-hmm. he came in so healthy, so mature, so... And then I had to break myself down, like, out of all of that negative self-talk, not deserving it. Because at first, I was like, for six months, I was like, this is too good. For the first 90 days, I'm like, he's going to fuck up. Mm-hmm. You were gonna, just waiting on it? I was it? just waiting on it, like, looking for it. And then the next 90 days, I was like, okay, ain't something... Shit happened. Ain't shit happened. And I'm like, okay, maybe he just he just a superhero type of sneaky nigga. Like, he... Know. <laughs> so now, then I some he extra, Right. Then I start looking for shit, and then it was like, just be happy. Is so how did you crazy? start to just what click? Was it that shower conversation, or what happened to where it was like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm gonna fuck this up. It was probably around the six month mark mm-hmm. after, like we had been together officially six months, and he had even said it. We had got into it at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> like in a ratchet way or y'all were silently like oh shit he had got a little loud and I don't do public scenes so I just got up and left <laughs> <laughs> and I went home but then he pulled right back up to my house mm-hmm. that's important like, I'm not yeah, let me tell you something. when you get in an argument with a nigga that cares about you it's not no we uh, well I'm leaving and I'm not gonna talk to you mm-hmm. no, he's, we're he gonna talk gone. about it he, meet, he met me at the house like and that up. probably felt good to you. You're it probably did. like, thank you. That, Girl, that, okay. That's what it was. Okay. It was that moment where, and he was like, I feel like you, I'm doing everything right and I'm really trying, but you won't accept it. Like, you won't even let me love you like how you deserve to be. And he's like, it, you got to understand that, that you cry. deserve it. I would have been crying in the street. Like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I would have hoped it would rain so we could have a kiss and rain scene for my and, memories. Right? And here's what, like, I, if any men listen to this show, like, what y'all have to understand is women go through so much dealing with heartache and relationships and dating and, and standards life. and life and just like sometimes it is so hard for us to g- get our point across in a way to where like we're not going to make the argument even worse but we do want you to still like fight for us bro Facts. we be getting mm-hmm. our hearts crunched on and mixed up into smoothies and i just felt like i was such a like happy-go-lucky naive girl in the dating scene for so long and then my last dude before him that made me go on that break Mm -hmm. was so horrible that Mm. I felt like I never want to miss shit again Mm -hmm. so I'm like I I gotta make sure my spidey senses are working but it was like this is a relationship where you okay cool they work they are on just in case anything ever happens but you don't really need them right now just Mm -hmm. that's in your tool belt just relax Mm -hmm. so it was like I had to realize because I was just so like ain't they gonna catch me slipping again like you know what I'm saying I was just (laughs) meanwhile you on the ice slipping (laughs) (laughs) what a good one you ice skating bro but I do wonder I had somebody tell me this yesterday I um, filmed some stuff for YouTube with a YouTuber his name is Jamal he's really dope and Mm -hmm. we were in the car riding around and he was telling me about who you are as a person like when someone's dating you and sometimes when your dating experiences are going so wrong and you keep meeting these wrong these bad apples he was like look at yourself real quick Mm -hmm. because you might actually be attracting what Mm -hmm. you are Mm -hmm. he was like the things that you're saying you want in a man do you exude that Mm -hmm. honesty are you being open and honest with Mm -hmm. the niggas right now right or are you not are you focused or are you not are you Mm -hmm. emotionally available are you (laughs) emotionally available or are you not do you have the just in case niggas because if you do that nigga do too Too, and it's really interesting to look at it like that you i was like shut up Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was honestly true. I like I kinda like was driving home 
And we we drank like this. I'm not a smoker except for hookahs, but we drank this like weed syrup stuff. And uh-huh. I was like, I'm gonna have some. And I it made me like go deep into my thoughts. And I was like, I might kind of be like a little toxic little drizzle of not toxic, but like fuck nigga. Oh um, mm-hmm. well. And that might be why I keep like the last dude that I fucked was in a serious way. He fucked me all the way up, like all the way up. And I'm like. I don't know if that was really as I'm is honest with people as I should be. And so I mm-hmm. might just be like getting what I'm putting out. I think it, it to a certain extent, because even with that last relationship that I was in before I took that break, when I took that break, I really spent so much time building me up, love and realizing that I didn't love me as much as I you thought, thought I you did. did. Or you show on Instagram. Yeah, mm-hmm. or I didn't even show myself the same level of respect or have boundaries or like basic level of self-love. Mm-hmm. You know what that I mean? That was it for me was the boundaries. And I kept letting people cross them and I was so upset. Shout out to Talkspace. You got to get Talkspace because when you talk so to the cocktails. therapist, it helps. It does. And so as I was going through therapy and just even before I started therapy just having real conversations with myself I stopped dating I ain't stopped having sex because mama needed her things okay, okay. so <laughs> I needed my feel good time but I did stop dating and then there was a period where I stopped having sex too because I was like okay I'm crying to my friends I'm tired of venting to them they're telling me this I don't like what they're telling me it's the truth but I don't like how they telling me I don't want to hear the shit so I'm gonna stop talking Same. about it <laughs> I don't like what I'm getting but I know that I'm not standing up for myself the way I should it's like I want all of these people to do things and respect me in a certain way but I'm not giving myself that respect and I'm not making them do it so it's like take a break Mm -hmm. leave it alone revisit it when you work on yourself and come back and yeah so I did that so now I'm just looking for the good men you just gotta wait so (laughs) so I'm just trying to be patient but I was like also on the flip side nobody's just gonna come knocking at my door so stop wishing like you gotta do part of the action too so it's like go out stop being in the house don't be so closed off don't be on the phone while you're out if you wanna meet people whether it's friends or men or whatever be open and just be happy and go out and enjoy yourself and you'll attract that yeah and i started to pray for my husband before i met my boyfriend now mm-hmm. so i'm not saying I don't are know. you religious I, I would say i'm more spiritual okay. like i don't go to church but i believe in god i was raised in the church mm-hmm. but i've studied all religions so i feel like they all the same so i don't like really yeah but um even though i don't know if he's my husband or not because they know ring on my finger but i did <laughs> start praying for my husband before i got in this relationship so after i had done the work after i started to feel like okay any when i did go back to dating at mm-hmm. the time any the first sign of fuck shit Bye. you were out of there mm-hmm. right and then i was like praying for my husband like okay God, make sure that he is learning the lessons that he needs to learn right now, mm-hmm. but doing it the work that he needs to do, building himself up so that we can attract each other uh-huh. at the right time. So I was praying for that too, and then my my God came about. But I feel like it's about doing the self work, mm-hmm. um, setting the standards. So mm-hmm. once you be like, fuck that, you're you're even when you start back dating, like don't even allow bending or wiggle room with your standards or your boundaries. Be clear about it, and then you'll attract the right guy. But once you get the guy this is what I just learned is like you have to trust that you did the work mm-hmm. and that you are in and a not second guess yeah and, and that you're that you have because once I uh, became more I guess like self loved or I evolved into a higher version of myself mm-hmm. I attracted somebody who met me at that like you said like once I started setting the standards and treating myself like a queen he came in and started treating me like mm-hmm. a queen too but then I had to trust that okay I've done the work and this is solid based off of the foundation that I built mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah and not second that. guess it and going through a nigga phone and all mm-hmm. that toxic shit. You know, like, yeah, I yeah. want to do that. Every now and then, our crazy does seep out. Like, <laughs> right. Like, oh, it's exciting. You be getting a little bored, like, ain't shit going on. This shit is too comfortable. Hold on. Let me check the tab. Yeah, yeah. Are we good? Um, yeah. Let's talk about really quick, shifting gears a little bit, going public. Okay. That is something where, like, when I saw you start posting about your boyfriend, I was like, oh, she really has. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, is he taking these pictures of her? Mm-hmm. You're really taking these pictures. Yeah. I was like, you were standing on a paddle board in this gorgeous outfit. I was like, did he take that picture? Yeah, he did take that picture. <laughs> he, he did take that picture. He do. He do. <laughs> we so trying to. that you were going to go public on Instagram. That is a big step. Even though it might Huge. sound stupid. It's a big step. You don't know what bitch it is going to be then start trying to. Like, there's just all these different <laughs> factors that come into play. Mm-hmm. When you decided to go public with him, was he like, nah, like, don't do that? Or no, you- he went public public first on mm-hmm. his page and he so his page is private one that's one reason why I was okay with going public because it's like <laughs> he, we gotta approve who mm-hmm. get accepted over here anyway uh-huh. and then two he used to post me so like when I tell you like he posted me before we even I'm on his page now from his birthday last year his birthday's May 20th and we weren't in a relationship to July 27th mm. so he was posting me 
And that nigga was manifesting. Yeah, he, he was like, like, but he did. This is it. He, when he posted me on his birthday, he told my best friend, like, yeah, I posted this picture of me and Brie from my party so all the hoes know this school coming up. Like, this school about to be. <laughs> so, she got next. Right, right. <laughs> so he was so open with our relationship and he has such a big family and all his friends follow me and stuff so I didn't want it to look like I'm hiding him mm -hmm. I feel you on that you yeah. know what I'm saying so I do post him more than I've ever posted anybody I've ever dealt I've never posted anybody I've ever dealt with period mm -hmm. but it's not as much I don't I still don't feel like I'm super public like as much as he is I feel like mm -hmm. I'm as public as I'm gonna get until I get married. It's like, you know I got a brand. Yeah. You might see him every now and then. Yeah, that's, that's all it. it. That's all this you get. This is not a Brie and my man page. It's no, still Brie Renee. It's still, still Brie Renee. Renee. And that's <laughs> important. Like you said, it's so scary. So you don't lose yourself. You, you don't lose yourself, your brand, what mm -hmm. you build. This is, like you said, it's not about him over here. This is my business that I've had going on before him. Mm -hmm. Kim, she just got a divorce. She probably has been depressed and sad, but Kim said it's still a brand. It's still a brand. <laughs> we ain't really been on here too much anyway. Yeah. Happy birthday. Here, I'm wearing a shout out to you. Yeah. The Kim on these Oh, right. We are living our life. Do mm -hmm. insecure? Do you feel in any insecurities from social media and like all the time? Your, I, your relationship? Like what? Like? Oh, you feel like relationship? Relationship wise, like, do, or just like, do you ever go through his comments and be like, "Who is this?" I, I used to in the <laughs> beginning, like. Be, you know, just trying to figure out who's important, who's who not, are who people? are these people. <laughs> yeah, I used to, but now I don't go through his comments. Um, I used to go through, I would say that first six months was real toxic. Yeah, mm -hmm. I used to go through his DMs. Because he, cause he's like so open. He gave me his password to his phone. Like he doesn't oh. hide anything. He will leave his phone when he goes to the gas station. You know, mm -hmm. he not real, he real open. Mm -hmm. So I used to just open, walk my ass right on through. You're like, the door is open. open. Yeah. So I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So I used to check everything. But now, like I said, the last six months, I've been more confident in a relationship and it. just letting mm -hmm. go. So yeah, I'm not really that. tripping. What about just insecure with yourself? I feel like so. Social media, yeah, makes a lot of women insecure. Like, I always feel like my stomach need to be flatter. My ass sure. need to be fatter. Um, my hair ain't done enough. I don't got enough mm -hmm. wig play. My hair aren't long enough. It's always, Brie, I just yeah. glued on some press-ons before we recorded. Oh, I, I didn't you. know those were press-ons. Yeah, girl. I had to get my emergency nails from Target because I was like, my nail appointment is until Wednesday. I'm not about to be sitting here with these little nubs. <laughs> I already don't have my hair done. I just washed it. I had to slick it back. Right, we and just trying to get here with these little nuts, and I'm sad. <laughs> like I'm like, dang, like man. No, I think as women, we just always gonna compare ourselves, even without Instagram or before yeah. Instagram. We as women compared ourselves to the other women in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We always in just the gonna, neighborhood, yeah. magazines, TV, everything. yeah, everything. Are you and um, Bay sexually adventurous? Like, would y'all ever have a threesome? Ah, okay, so <laughs> adventurous. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I like to try new things. We like to try new things. We incorporate toys sometimes. We uh -huh. mix it up. Um, threesome, I don't think I could really share. <laughs> and I'm so fake gay on Instagram. Uh -huh. But I don't ever want to eat no pussy. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm just not, and I love my the LGBTQ community. I'm raised by lesbians, you know, mm -hmm. and so it's cool. I didn't know. What do you mean? Was, by lesbian? My mom is gay, I so I was always this. raised. Yeah, by I have three moms. So I was like a mom, a stepmom. Well, they a real mom, like a dad and a stepdad, mm -hmm. but it's all women. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I support that community. I'm here for it. But I just don't like to dibble and dabble. So you're like, no, no threesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nah. I don't think mm -hmm. I can handle it. Have you ever been to yeah. a sex club? I have like trappies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I have. Did you enjoy what it? Happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to watch. Like, I'm so freaky. Like, I probably will try a lot of things. I just don't think I want to share. Now, we could have, and I play with my boyfriend. Like, what if a guy, what if we did a threesome with guys? Like, what mm -hmm. if you're like, fucking me and the guy's like sucking my nipples or stuff? And he's like, fuck no, that's a train. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, he's like that is a train. I'm like, well, I'm not doing it with another. So wait, girl. when you went to trapeze, did you have sex at trapeze, or mm -hmm. you just went and watching? Mm -hmm. Were you nervous about people knowing who you were? No, I wasn't nobody then. Oh, okay. Like, I, was, I mean, I was somebody, but didn't know. Would you, so would you go now? Yeah, I would go. Okay. I would Can still we make go. this a date? Yeah, that would go. be fun. I, no, I'm fun. down for that. I probably won't fuck, but I would like to watch. I no, I'm not. not yeah. But I like to watch. The I like to watch the. We can go have drinks and commentary. Yeah, I was like, I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> Let me move. Let's switch seats. Yeah. Drinks and commentary. Yes. Bring a bottle. Of, uh, what are we bring a bottle of? I don't know. Because you can bring your own bottle now. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't know because I don't want my drop goggles to get on and I get confused uh, oh. about when I see. Reason <laughs> to be like, I thought we said we weren't fucking. Yeah. And I'll be like, sorry, girl. Like, <laughs> I'll be back in twenty minutes. I'm like, okay, Kiki. <laughs> I like that move. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay, you guys. Um, we are gonna move on to indecisive Diane. And then when we come back, we are gonna have Brie Renee straight from the A, your favorite righty y'all, babe. Help us with some advice. Okay. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Hey ladies, okay, so this week, this date, out of the ordinary, very expensive, but there's payment plans and you don't have to do it till October. Go to paradiseandvibe.com and book your spot to go on the best yoga retreat you've ever been on. It's open to all genders. It can be a date, it could be solo and maybe you meet your mans doing yoga on the beach. Bye ladies. Okay, and we are back from Indecisive Diane. If you have any suggestions for Indecisive Diane, make sure you send them to us at cocktails at ATL at gmail.com. Um, so now it's time for the advice. Bree is going to help us answer the questions. If you have a question for us, you can email it to us, askcocktails at gmail.com. When you need I'm advice, move my shirt over. Ooh. Girl, my badass, ratchet ass friends. <laughs> They're the, the worst people in the world. And my mom. I, mm -hmm. I like to get it like a, because my mom is super successful. Uh -huh. So it's like, let me ask like one of the richest people I know. And then yes. let me ask Love my hood that. reference. And then I'll find out find the media. You're the media. You're like, hmm, I'll find the right answer. Okay. Yeah. Well, the first one was titled Hot Girl Summer? Question mark, exclamation mark. She <laughs> says, Hi, ladies. I just wanted to say, I love your podcast. Thank you. Thanks. I listen to it between calls at work. It makes my day better. <laughs> so I am 23 years old and I just recently broke up with my boyfriend of two years. He ended things for a new girl. Like he left me for a new girl. I am ready for a hot girl summer, but I have an issue. I am on all the dating apps and I find a lot of cute guys that are my type. Although I'm a huge romantic and it's fucking up my expectations for these dudes. <laughs> I find a guy, I tell myself I just want to fuck, but I keep getting caught up in the fantasy of a potential new partner. This is almost with every guy I start liking. Ever since the breakup, I want intimacy or a lustful time. I even want to go on some dates here and there. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The guys I talk to, I text all day, every day. I do not want to be in another relationship for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm confused. Me too. <laughs> I guess I'm asking, how can you fuck some ca how can you fuck someone casually without catching feelings? Also, how can I date without falling too hard? I want to have fun this summer with zero heartbreaks. Sincerely, what? a bitch with no idea. You should have put you don't have an a idea. bitch just about to have her heart broken. Right. <laughs> you can't stop yourself from heartbreak. It's, it might happen. It might not. You got to get that out of your head. And you got to stop. You need to live in the real world. You keep saying you're in these fantasies. like, And you're confused. You, you don't want a relationship, but you're texting niggas all day. Find a hobby. Read a book. <laughs> Several of them. Join Kiki's book club. And yeah. we're, we're, make sure they're wearing a condom. Because raw that dick too. equals relationship. Yes. Yeah, you know, raw dick is like, goes to your heart. It doesn't, that's how you get your heart broke. So. Or yeah. it goes inside of your fallopian tubes and comes to your uterus as a baby. And, and you don't want that? You should I don't want that problem. I would just also like to reiterate this. Everybody's not made for hot girl summer, and that's okay. It, yeah. it is. Some bitches be like, you are the type of woman where like, you know if you start getting to know a man, and you're going to fall in love, and mm -hmm. you like him, and you don't want to deal with nobody else. If you know that you're that type of person, that you sound like that type of person, hot that's girl okay. summer is not made for you. It might not be your season for hot girl summer, because I, I will say my early 20s, summer. yeah, my early 20s, I could have never done hot girl summer. I was so hopeless romantic. I was mm -hmm. so, every guy was supposed to be supposedly my husband yeah. if you were on the way or what are we doing it wasn't until like 27 where I was like okay whoo, I just want to have fun yeah. so you might be not in that season you where you're trying to force it you might be winter yeah. wonderland woman Okay. You might be. Like, you might be. Yeah, like the snuggle the, buddy. Snuggle you know? buddy. And yeah. that's okay. Like, don't let Meg fool you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Meg got all of us out here thinking that we're all that type. And we're really not. And no. I'm saying that because, bitch, I'm not. I'm just trying to go on <laughs> I was trying to say at first, did you write this? Yeah, right. And I thought, I was like, did <laughs> I? got a little too confusing. So I'm yeah. like, don't be this damn confused. Yeah, I, yeah no. I was too confused. Like, and I, sometimes I got be a hoe. <laughs> 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 I can differentiate. But sometimes I'd be on the hoe and then I do be falling in love and getting chose. So Facts. it's like, you got to know who you are, sis, and you're not hot girl summer, sis. 
You're not. It's okay. Just take some time. time. Yeah. yeah. Take some time. Work out. Get healthy. Cleanse. Mm -hmm. And meet a good, respectable man that you can have hot girl summers in his bedroom with just him. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay, next one. Hey, ladies, I found your podcast last year and I have been a faithful listener ever since. I even subscribed to your Patreon Thank because you. I love your vibe and your content. Thanks, girl. I need your help, besties. Here's what's up. I migrated to the U.S. from Jamaica in July of 2019. I was so depressed and lonely because I had no job, no friends, and I was alone a lot. One day while in the supermarket, a Jamaican man picked up my accent and we started talking. Uh-oh. We exchanged numbers and kept in touch. Was <laughs> there was a, there was always a sexual chemistry between us, but I didn't engage at first because I wanted more. But I realized nothing else was coming. So after six months of trying to get him to take me seriously, I gave in and just had the sex, <laughs> the sex, <laughs> because I was horny and he was available. The sex was great. So I kept going back. And now he is my only sex partner outside of sex. We don't really relate. So no gifts, no phone conversations, no dates. He doesn't do anything for me except make me come. Mm. Okay, this is, sounds like a fuck buddy, but let's see where we're going with it. Fast forward to almost a year later. I'm in Chipotle getting food and I meet this guy. I stepped into the restaurant and he immediately noticed me and we start talking. He was cool and handsome, so I gave him my number. We spoke on the phone every day after meeting and he organized a date for us. That went well, so he asked me on another date. We went for dinner, then to the waterfront. Oh, that sounds nice. We stood by the pier and talked and hugged and held hands. There is a club on the pier, so we popped in and danced a bit. Then we decided to head on. Do y'all be dancing in the club? I'll be dancing. With men? I'll be dancing, yeah. yeah. I'll be dancing by myself, but with a man, like, we're going to dance in I'm the club. I'm usually in like, a section. 90s. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time okay yeah. on the way home we were talking about sex I told him I did have a sex partner but it wasn't serious and I haven't spoken to him since we met I really like this guy but I feel like the energy shifted since I told him that uh yeah um I don't know if I should have or not or even what to do now I haven't told my sex partner I've been dating someone because it's just two dates and I don't think it was necessary but I haven't had sex with him in that time I've just kind of avoided him I I want to keep the guy who takes me out and checks on me. What should I do? Send for my iPhone. Stop letting your right hand know what your left hand doing. Yeah. If you wasn't giving him no coochie and you wasn't finna cut off the side nigga or the, the fuck buddy, why are you even letting either of them know about either of this? This it's not so neither of them this, yeah. and this is women. It's like yeah. you feel like you owe it to the nigga. To, do you know what he got going on? Okay. Right. No. Y'all are talking about sex with each other. Unless you about to invite Jamaican man to come join the party, he don't need to know about him. Mm -mm. And I also just wanted to add in when she was talking about Chipotle. Did y'all know that Chipotle has cauliflower rice now? Yes. yes. Girl, I know. It's a life keto. Like, I cannot uh -huh. get that. Yes. That is good. It yeah. is good. It's all it charred and stuff. And flavored. Yeah. 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 It tastes like real rice. Yeah. <laughs> I could do it. Yeah, girl, stop. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Don't tell them. Like, None yeah, of your business. You're doing too much. Sometimes we do too much as women. Stop. Do what yeah. these niggas do. Yeah. I used to, I definitely used to be team too much. Mm -hmm. I Sometimes I, I teeter-totter back and forth between teams. And I'm like, why are you doing all this? Yeah. Yeah. But this yeah. is like stuff you learn. I'm so it happy because it's like, I have checked I, I'm hearing this stuff and I'm like, oh, I almost did that and I checked it when yeah. I was in a relationship. Even sometimes when you're when you have a partner, we can still share too much. Like yeah. you don't have to tell them, oh yeah, he used to be in my DMs or oh yeah, he that ain't none of his like, business. Now you're in the situation. situation. Is it important? Yeah, is, is it this, is this important? Even sometimes if it's like a nigga is it you his used, brother? It, right. right. If it's a nigga that I used to fuck with, and let's say we're all at a party and he's here. Do I really no. need to tell him? Is it that detrimental? And if it's not, what are you doing? Yeah. If it's not a Portia, Simon, and Dennis situation, shut up. Right. <laughs> Just shut up. Yeah, that's something you got to talk about. Yeah. But if it's not that, leave it alone. You're making an Just... unnecessary situation. Sometimes when people do that, even when I've done that, it's like, do you just want attention? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to share. Yeah. It's like, stop. Shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, remember, the advice email is askcocktails at gmail.com. Send it to us and maybe we'll read it on the show. Now it is time for the cocktails. Uh-huh. 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 Once upon a time, not long ago, I was a ho, 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 was a ho, 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 was a ho. 
cocktails. Ooh, so if you have a cocktail you want to share with us, you can send it to us, cocktails at ATL at gmail.com, and maybe we'll read it on the show. Bree, do you have a cocktail to share? I know she got a cocktail to share. Because <laughs> she ain't had bad sex in two years. I right? haven't, <laughs> but I did have like a sex experience. Okay. Um, that, I just made that word up. <laughs> a sex experience like uh, a couple, was that like, Two, three nights ago. Okay. Anyway, so, so we it's fresh. Yeah, me and my partner we're adventurous and we were talking about trying out anal. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yes. I really love the finger. <laughs> Mm-hmm. really love the finger and I'm like you know I think I want to go further and he's like I don't think that's going to work because he was like your booty hole is so tight mm-hmm. right? like we, we're we literally just sitting in there just talking and I said that I was like well I hear you we just got to get a certain anal lube you know mm-hmm. there's different lube between anal and vag- vaginal go I be doing yeah I be doing my research mm-hmm. so I was like I think that it could work you know when we're ready but as we're talking about sex laying in the bed of course we get hot and horny so then we start to do it mm-hmm. so then we're having sex and I did this like weird Y'all it was so unexpected. <laughs> I did this weird move where I like was scooting up, like up off the bed. So uh-huh. like I'm in my my lower part is like in the air. So he's like going in, and then he, it's so wet that he slips out of my vagina and then slips into my anal. Ooh. And, so, and I like scream. I'm like, that would be me. Ah! But did that you would like be me. it? But did you like it though? No, I think because of how how quickly it did it. Did it. it was like because he didn't even fo- know to be gentle because it just slipped. It just slipped. Like we were just kind of, and then I'm. But I'm moving up, so then he went in the back door. Oh, so it was Jesus. like it wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. So it was like totally. You gotta warm that baby it up. Threw, yeah, yeah, threw it off. So I was like, I couldn't boo boo for like two days. It oh. was sore. Like, are you gonna try it again? I am. I think we just weren't ready. And he was like, See, that's that shit I'm talking about. <laughs> See, I am him because I be like, the ain't uh uh-uh, uh, it ain't gonna work. It's too tight. It hurts even with the lube. <laughs> Hopefully, your experience is better since you want it. Mm-hmm. But yes, my so God. Maybe, maybe you'll have to get some numbing cream. But Something. like, for the most part, once he gets it in and gets like two slow pumps in, it feels good. Amazing. I oh bet it God. does because I really like the finger from there. It's like hitting that G spot from the back. With the finger yes. and a dick? It's That's way a different. different side. You gotta go real slow. Real slow. <laughs> drive, home, drive slow, homie. Yeah. <laughs> drive slow. Oh, Jesus. That was my cocktail from this oh. week. I know do it. The but cock I, was wish actually, luck. I wish y'all luck. Look, the cock was actually in my tail. <laughs> <laughs> the cock was in my tail. That needs mm. to be the name of the episode. The mm. cock was in my tail. Okay. okay. Speaking of cocks and tails and some bullshit, y'all, I just hope that this cocktail, somebody sent this to us. And we're both going to share. It's a long ass cocktail, so we broke it up to where we're both going to read different parts of it. Yes, okay. but I hope that you made this up, girl, because this, this right here. I hope you made it up. I hope she made this up. This is sad. This is we, a lot. We had to have a meeting all about your cocktail because mm-hmm. this was a lot going on. Shout out to you for being a patron. We, we, we thank you, you for sharing, but I was just shocked. Like, my jaw was dropping. Okay, let's read it. You want to start or you want me to start? Um, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I'll start. Okay. So, part one. The subject line says, gay dick almost ruined my life. Mm. Hi, ladies. I am a patron and decided to tell my heartbreaking relationship story after hearing about Medina and 6-8 Bay. I'm sad that I was... The inspiration. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. No. Okay. It's a little long, but you won't regret hearing it. So, this hmm. is how I almost lost it over gay dick. So, in 2012, I was a server at TGI Fridays, living my best life. A new server had started working there. Let's call him Lee. Lee came in the door with people talking about him already. It was told that he was gay. The nigga drew on his eyebrows most days. And the first week he was there, he tried (laughs) to talk to my gay male best friend. You see? Which was a complete fail. About a month later, he approached me. And, of course, I'm not into gay dudes. So, I ignored him for about two weeks. But mm-hmm. the day came when a bitch was hungry and he was willing to take me out. So, of course, I obliged. Hello? I was a broke server and a college student. But you said you was living your best life. The first day, he whined and dined me. And because of that, I allowed him to take me out on a few more dates. I asked about him being gay and he told me he was only experimenting in college and ultimately wanted to be with a woman. Before I knew it, I was falling for this man. So I decided to give him some pussy shit. He pretty much paid for it. And (laughs) let me tell y'all, he had the biggest dick I had ever seen to this day. Next thing I know, I'm dick whipped and in a relationship. Now, let's get to the relationship. 
He was a huge flirt, flirting with both men and women at our job. Every time I approached him about it, he gaslighted me, making me feel like I was the one tripping. I started <laughs> confiding in a fellow coworker. Let's call her Marla. Marla and I became real close and opened up about everything. She had just lost her virginity to this mystery guy she just <laughs> met and she fell in love with him, but he lived too far away. Leave a pen in that for later. So my relationship with Lee was getting really rocky and he kept gaslighting me. So I decided to end it. I needed to for my mental health. I knew something was going on. I just didn't have any proof and I didn't know exactly what it was. Well, two weeks after we broke up, Lee started dating a regular customer that came into TGI Fridays who was in a wheelchair. This is relevant to another part of the story. Okay. She came in all the time and it was just too heartbreaking for me. So I wrote to her on Instagram telling her how her presence was bothering me. <laughs> in the conversation, she pretty much said she felt bad for me, but she wouldn't stop coming in to see her man. I was pissed and I told one of my coworkers about it. The next day, said coworker accidentally bumped into the wheelchair girl and sent her sent her damn chair spinning. I'm ashamed of how happy I was that it happened, but she had it coming. Well, that relationship lasted for like a month. It ended and she then stopped coming in. Lee tries to start talking back to me after that relationship, but something still didn't feel right. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> a few things shouldn't have felt right. It's all wrong. Okay, yeah. but the next day, my best friend tells me that through half of my relationship with Lee, he was sleeping with Marla. That's the co-worker from the beginning of the story. Her homegirl. Yeah, was yes. like, I can't talk to him because he lives far. It's very messy at Fridays. I don't even want to patronize right. that business again. <laughs> okay, Lee was the mystery guy that Marla told me about. I was ready to beat some ass. My best friend and my boss called me down. You done got the rest of the job? Okay. Y'all messed The manager. Mm -hmm. And I remembered I had too much to lose. I was graduating in two months and I couldn't get a charge over this puss ass hoe in my Mandy B voice. But this hoe was getting off like that. Oh, wasn't getting off like that. So I made up my own concoction of Pepsi, Jack Daniels glaze, which is the consistency of molasses. Because remember, they had TGI Fridays using up the shit. So next time you go in for some Jack Daniels glaze ribs, she might be the reason you ain't got no sauce. But anyway, mm -hmm. so she put the glaze, the Pepsi, some ranch, and poured that shit all up in that bitch's purse, ruining all her shit. Man. Wow. Okay. Everyone knew I did it, but they didn't have any proof. So I got away with it. Leah and Marla ended up dating full time, even though she fucked up her purse. You see how this kind of shit goes. Couldn't have... Couldn't have that shit either. So I started flirting with Lee again and slept with him too. Had to return the favor to Marla. I told her the next day just to prove the dumb hoe a point. Well, the joke was on me for the moment because she stayed with him and got pregnant by him. Oh my they God. got married, <gasps> moved in together, um, and moved to another... I'm sorry. They got married and moved to another state for a year until she couldn't deal with him cheating on her with men and women and they divorced he's now married again and a pastor of somebody's church no. shaking my head i can't believe i fell so hard for a bisexual eyebrow drawing thigh tattoo having fake pastor with a huge dick hope it wasn't too long and hope you enjoyed attach her some pictures for everyone in the story oh she sent the pictures i, I put it up for i gotta see these pictures i you so this is lee all, i cannot believe you wrote this and are you need that's him and and the Marla. Okay. Code. That's the, the wheelchair girl. Come and use code code. Look the wheelchair oh. picture. Oh, man. You need He's holding hair. a That's wheelchair. That's his current wife. He's dipping the wheelchair over <laughs> like <laughs> And this is the girl who wrote the story. Okay. What was we, okay? Her name. I got two pieces of advice. First off, you don't shit where you eat. Okay, you do not shit where you eat. Okay. So if you work there, don't fuck with nobody at your job. Period. You I don't give a stop fuck. Doing that. You done took the Jack Daniels glaze. Yeah, like and no. put it in her purse, and, and she still kept that man. And you don't want everybody in your business. And you wrote it like you're like, yeah, I got got them. You did. It. No, well, she said the joke was on me. Yeah, no, she knew the joke she, was on. She her. said the joke was on me because they was still fucking and got me. Married and, and moved then away. second of all, so don't Ooh. eat where you shit. Don't shit where you eat. Don't fuck with nobody at your job. You do not want all your coworkers like Marla in your business fucking your man. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, <laughs> if you ever, and this is coming from my gay uncle, if you 
ever suspect that a man is gay, he he's is. gay. Yeah. If he draws on his eyebrows, red flag, and that's not six flags. Okay? okay? Yeah. Stop. Stop. Just, just stop. come on. And, and you know he was gay beforehand. You just wanted some dick. Don't be that. Like, she yeah. didn't even draw her eyebrows. with your man drawing all his eyebrows? Come on, yeah, sis. No. Like, come on. Does he have a she YouTube knew. channel? Because I've been trying to work on my eyebrow drawing. I don't and think once you he want was these gay, eyebrows, Medina. But then I had a oh. real problem. I had a real problem with after she knew he was gay and after he had she messed with I'm gonna fuck him. And yet to get back at Marla, but it's like it's you gay ain't dick. Get back at you nobody. nobody. <laughs> He's just getting all this free pussy and booty hole that he don't even want. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Stop. Yeah, it is. Well, I'm sorry this happened to you, but I'm so glad you sent it in because this was some bullshit and that's what we needed to end the episode. Thank you, girl, so much. I'm sorry <laughs> that you went through that. Please stop fucking your coworkers. Yeah. Please leave them alone and don't Instagram stalk these people no more. Bring yeah. Okay, leave them Do you have anything you want to plug? Oh, yeah. So I definitely have my podcast coming up, Higher Being Society. Mm -hmm. Wanted to tell you guys. So I'm doing something about all, because you know, I'm on the radio here in Atlanta, but sometimes Mm -hmm. you can't talk about, have really good conversations like this. Right. Or even things that can like really help people or improve their overall quality of life. So it's for everybody, you know, my ratchets all the way up to like those people who do yoga, whatever. (laughs) Like it's for any level, wherever you are, just trying to improve your life. So we'll give tips and advice on every aspect of your life. Fitness, finance, Finance, health, wealth, relationships. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to keep it real. And I feel like I would trust Brie on anything that has to do with fitness and finance because the bitch literally protrudes that. Like, I am. <laughs> Lit, <laughs> bitch. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram. Yes, make sure you follow me at Brie's the name, B-R-I-S-T-H-E-N-A-M-E. And make sure you're following us at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. And I'm at Coffee Bean. And until next time, you guys, goodbye. goodbye. I'm sorry. But the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.